Hello, in this video we will learn about the Blender interface. The first thing that you see when you open Blender is this default scene over here. So I'm now briefly going to describe everything that you see in this default Blender scene. So let's start with the 3D viewport. The 3D viewport is where you will make your 3D animated movie. So you will create your 3D models here, you will animate them here, you will see them come to life here. And this is one of the most important editors in Blender. It would be pretty difficult and pretty silly to animate or model something without the 3D viewport open. And if you notice as I go to the left, you'll notice that these buttons here uh, pretty much carry out some functionality that 3D artists tend to use quite regularly. Um, previously, you'd had to memorize some shortcut key for that. So this actually makes it a lot easier. This pretty much allows you to not have to memorize those shortcut keys and just do it directly here. And even when I hover over some of these buttons, you can see the shortcut key actually being shown. So, for example, G is to move an object. But if I hover here, you can see that the shortcut, it shows it exactly the G. And even if I press translate, the object moves as expected. Uh, but again, I prefer using shortcut keys. Yeah, if you hate using shortcut keys, there are the buttons right there and if you want these are just for transforms for rotation for scale and if you, you can also do stuff for creating objects um, relational stuff you don't need to know what they are adding keyframes for animation doing some physics related stuff uh, grease pencils for just uh, drawing sketches and things like that the next is the outliner every 3d object that you have in your viewport so that includes your cube, your camera, your lamp, will be visible in the outliner. So if I click one of these items, for example the cube, the cube is selected. If I click the lamp, the lamp is selected. And if I click the camera, the camera is selected. So the outliner shows you pretty much a bird's eye view of every single 3D object that you have in your scene. And you might be thinking, what's the point of having that? That's not useful. I can just select it directly from the 3D viewport. Well. Actually, it is quite useful if you have so many 3D objects in your scene and you want to find that exact object just by searching. Say you're working on a massive epic scene involving thousands of soldiers, for example. Well, you might struggle to find a soldier named Bob in the 3D viewport alone. So in the outliner, you can actually search by typing the name of your 3D object. So in this case, if I search for Bob, that list will filter to show that soldier and then I, and then I can click that object uh, directly and find where Bob is exactly hiding in the 3D viewport. So to actually search for an object, I'm just going to hover over the outliner and scroll down. That tends to um, show more of the, the uh, top bar over here. Or if you don't want to do that, just drag out this window and you'll see everything. And then in the search bar, just type the object that you're looking for. So in this instance, I want a cube. And there you go. You can see the cube right there. And if I click that, the cube will be selected. The next is the properties window. This is pretty much the core of all of Blender, especially as a filmmaker. This is, if you're a filmmaker, if you're a game developer, this is pretty much the dead set core that controls 90% of Blender. This editor pretty much sets up the properties for most of the objects in Blender. So if you need to render something, you will need to come here. If you want to add materials to your objects, you will need to come here. If you want to add some modifier or some constraint, or if you want to add some physics such as making your um, objects collide or making a cloth, or if you want to just do some stuff like add hair, you have to come to the properties window. If you want to add some advanced camera effects like depth of field or motion blur, you will need to come here. And even things like if you want to change dimensions of your 3D world, you should also come to the properties window. It is one of the most important editors in Blender, just like the 3D viewport. In some cases, it can actually be more important than the 3D viewport. All right, moving along, this is the timeline window. So in the timeline window, you can pretty much play your animation back. You can pause. You can go to the beginning or the end of your animation. The start frame shows where the animation starts. The end frame shows where the animation ends. And this one shows where, on what frame you're, you are currently on at the moment. So yeah, it's pretty much basic and pretty much straightforward. Not much else to say. 
uh, the last window that's open, and I, I don't think a lot of people notice this, but it's this window here. Yes, this is also a window, and in this window, we have the info editor open. Um, I can prove it if I just drag this down and I change this to say the graph editor or the 3D viewport again. You'll, you'll notice that this is also a window. But it's always better to keep this as the info editor because you obviously need the info for stuff like saving your Blender file, opening your file, um, you know, rendering. You can also render from here as well, by the way. But uh, obviously you can't control things like the, the resolution, uh, where you want to store your animation and things like that. Uh, you can also set options to uh, make your windows full screen and, and or get help. So it's the, the, just the basic default menu bar that you see in general applications. So yeah, that's pretty much the basic default Blender interface that you see here. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say regarding the Blender interface. I hope you learned something from this video and that this video is useful to you. Uh, keep blending and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.